Ah, I'll figure it out. It'll come back to me. Okay. Um, we're looking at mechanics, AP Physics C mechanics uh, of 2007, question number one. Um, we are looking at linear dynamics right now. So dynamics is a lot of F equals MA. Um, and what we're looking at here is a block of mass M being pulled along a rough horizontal surface by a constant pulling force, um, uh, which is F1. So it's a constant applied force, F1. It's a rough surface, so we know there's friction. There's the mass. Uh, and it's at an angle theta to the horizontal, um, as we see in that picture. Uh, we know the acceleration of the block is A1. And we're using M, F1, theta, A1, and fundamental constants to get our answer. Um, on the figure below, what we're just asked to do initially is to draw and label a free body diagram showing all the forces on the block. Um, normally for a free body diagram, you have a dot that you draw everything um, from. For a square like this, I would call that a force body diagram, but whatever. Um, there's only four forces we need to worry about here. Um, the first is the actual force F1, which is pulling the block. And it is a very important thing here that you do not put the components. Many of you are going to want to put, you know, the F1 in the X direction and the F1 in the Y direction. Do not do that. Um, they are just asking for the forces on the block, not the force components. And if you draw the force components, you're adding extra forces in, and they will dock you points on that. Okay? So there's F1. Um, the other forces that we have to exist here are due to the rough horizontal surface. Um, the rough horizontal surface gives us a force of friction acting on the block. And then naturally the block has a weight pulling it down. Uh, you can call this force of gravity, or you can call it the weight, or you could call it mg. Personally, I like writing it as mg because that's the equation we use. And then last but not least, uh, because the block is not falling through the ground, um, it has to have something supporting it, which pushing up is the normal force. Um, we don't have any grid lines on this, so I can just kind of draw the normal and the weight being similar in size. Um, technically, if there was a grid here, I'd want to make sure I drew them exactly the same amount of size. Uh, furthermore, um, I would want to make sure that my force of friction vector to the left here uh, was slightly smaller than whatever the x component of F1 could have been. Otherwise, we're not going to have any acceleration there. Okay, um, But that's it. Those are our four points there. Um, and you got a point for each of those forces. So you got one, two, three, four points on an AP Physics C problem just by drawing four lines. Whenever we're talking about low-hanging fruit and just getting points where you can get them, this is what we're talking about. Okay, um, so let's look at an expression for the normal force exerted by the surface on the block. Um, so when we're looking at the normal force, we are looking in the y direction. We're looking vertically up and down. And we know since the block is on that surface, um, the sum of the forces in that y direction is going to be zero. And the two forces we have in the y direction are the normal and the weight. I need to pick a positive direction for these. Um, well, I stand corrected. We've got three forces in the vertical direction. We've got a normal, a weight, and this is where we have to think about breaking F1 up into an X and a Y component. So let's pick the up direction as positive. And what this will allow us to do is we can say that the normal force plus F1, and then if we want this Y direction here, and this is angle theta, this is actually um, the opposite side. So it's the sine side of things. So it's going to be F1 sine of theta. And then the only other force we have here is the weight, which is acting down, so that's negative. So minus the weight, that has to equal zero. And then since we're just deriving an expression for the normal force, 
um, we just need to solve for n here. So we can just say that uh, by moving the weight over to the other side and the f sine theta over, the normal is equal to the weight, which is mg minus f1 sine of theta. That's it. Even though this says derive, we're not actually taking a derivative. Derivative? Uh, we're just setting up the equation from a first principle. So it's very important that we write out um, our f equals ma setup and then our final answer. That's two points right there. Um, if we want an expression for the coefficient of kinetic friction mu between the block and the surface, well, now we need to start looking at left and right directions. So what we need to start setting up here is that the sum of the forces in the x direction equals the mass times the acceleration. So in our x direction, we have a few forces here. Um, we're going to have that x component of the F1 going to the right, and then our friction acting to the left. So we could write this as F1 cosine of theta. That's our adjacent side, and I'm taking right to be positive. So there's F1 cosine of theta, and then minus the force of friction, which is going to be mu n. Remember, friction is fun. Friction equals mu n. And this has to equal ma. Well, m is the mass of our block, and our acceleration here is a1, as given in uh, the problem here. So all I have to do now in order to solve for mu are two things. Um, one, I have to plug in a value of the normal force into this. And the reason why I have to do that is they've asked us in this problem to only use these uh, constant terms, m, f1, theta, a1, and then constants. So I'm not allowed to use the normal and just leave it like that. I've got to do a little bit more math here. So what I have to do instead is rewrite this as f1 cosine of theta minus mu, and then I need to plump in all of this. So there's our mg minus f1 sine of theta, and that equals m a1. Now I can solve for mu. Um, doing this will be a fun time. So let's go over here. Um, mu and then mg f sine theta is kind of all like tucked together, so that'll be a division move at the end. Uh, I need to subtract this f1 cosine theta term over. So what I'm going to have is um, m a1 minus f1 cosine of theta, and that is going to equal the negative mu and then that parentheses term right here. So uh, let's do this. Let's get rid of uh, the negative by making this positive and this negative. And then I'll just divide by the parentheses term here. So I'll just divide by mg minus f1 sine of theta. So my final answer here can just be read as, whoa, what was that? My final answer can be read here as mu equals, and I'll just flip flop those positions, f1 cosine of theta minus ma1 all over, and this is the quantity, mg minus f1 sine of theta. So that's my value from you. Kind of big, but um, nothing too crazy there. We're just setting x directions and then kind of working through the math. Okay. Um, in part D, on the axis below, we're trying to sketch the graphs of the speed and the displacement of the block as a function of time if the block started from rest at x equals 0 and at t equals 0. So because our block started at rest and it also started at x equals 0, for our displacement graph, we can start this at 0, 0. And since it started at rest at time equals 0, our initial speed can be 0 as well. 
Now, it's important for us to go back to the question and realize that this block is moving by a constant applied force. And if there's a constant applied force, that means your acceleration is a constant. It's just some value. Because of this, if we know that the acceleration is a constant, that means that our velocity will be increasing at the same rate every moment in time. And if the velocity is increasing at the same rate, then we can say that that velocity graph is going to be a linear line where the slope is the acceleration. So that's our velocity graph. If we then look at a displacement graph, well, if our velocity is increasing, not only are we going to be moving further and further, but we're going to be moving further and further, faster and faster. So this graph will actually have a parabolic curve to it. And if you want to go back and think about the calculus involved, you don't have to. But if your acceleration is a constant, if you take the integral of the acceleration, that gives you the velocity. So your velocity is some constant times uh, t, because we're integrating with respect to time. And then the position is the integral of velocity. So you get something like ct squared over 2. Um, so that's why you see our parabolic and our linear and then our constant value there. Um, and for this, the equation is actually, uh, that's actually 1 half at squared as the constant. So that's just how that pops up, if you want to think of it that way. But you don't have to. You can just think of generally how things are moving and how the rates are changing. So that's not too bad. Um, and for our last step here, uh, we're asked if the applied force is large enough the block is going to lose contact with the surface. And that's going to happen because the block's being pulled up as it's being pulled over. And if you pull it up enough, um, you're going to lift that block off the edge there. Um, we'd like to derive an expression for the magnitude of the greatest acceleration the block can have and still maintain contact with the ground. So this is kind of an interesting little point here. Um, there's a lot of math that goes into the last step, but not a ton of points. Um, what we're looking to do here is if you're able to lift that block off of the surface, you no longer have a normal force pushing back on you. There's still a weight pulling down, but there's no more normal force. And if there's no normal force, that means the friction is zero. So the big thing here is that the friction equals zero and this is due to the normal equaling zero as well. Okay, So what ends up happening is because our friction is zero, because our normal is zero, you've lifted the block off, the sum of the forces in the x direction then is actually only going to be the force that you're pulling with, F1, or you could call it F max here, um, times the cosine of theta and that has to equal m and then a max. Okay. Now, if you wanted to take some steps from here, we can solve for a max just by dividing each side by m. So we know what the maximum acceleration can be. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find um, that value of that greatest acceleration there. And I'm not allowed to use this force term in my final answer. I have to just use m's, a's, uh, cosines of thetas. So I need to get this force out of there. And the way we do it is we've just used the x direction. We need to go into the y direction now as well. If we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction, there's still going to be the sine term, so f sine of theta. We don't have that normal anymore we need to worry about. So we, it's just this and the weight. And this is going to equal 0. Now, this matters for us because what we can do here is we can move the mg to the other side and then divide by the sine of theta. That will allow us to solve for f. So we can say here that f is equal to moving the mg over, mg divided by the sine of theta. This can get put back into there. 
what this allows us to do then is it allows us to say that a max is equal to mg cosine of theta divided by m sine of theta. There's the mg over sine theta, and there's the cosine of theta over m. From here, we quickly recognize that the m's divide out. And then hopefully, you recognize that cosine over sine is a special trig term. You could leave this like this. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you just wanted this to be more complete and possibly make cotton happy, this would be g. And then cosine over sine is a cotangent. And that's it. Okay. Um, so you could do it like that. Uh, if you wanted to say, like, look, this force could be anything and just call this F1, you could have actually ended up here. But if you wanted to solve it all the way out, you could do that as well. So that's it. That's a quick linear dynamics problem. It was really just a lot of F equals MA. And a lot of the points were actually given just up in the free body diagram. There were four points up there. And then there were actually three points down here in the graph. So if you didn't know how to do any math, but you knew how to draw a diagram and you had an idea of what the graphs look like, uh, you could get 7 out of 15 points on this problem super, super fast um, and save your time for somewhere else. But with that, 2007 question one mechanics, that's finished. Take it easy.